what I want you to notice um, with this drawing is I used my paper. So I didn't make my monster too tiny. Um, I made it fairly large. I could have even gone a little more and who knows, maybe I'll add something there to the top to even use this paper a bit more. Um, that way you have the most amount of space to fill in with your complex patterns that you are going to be asked to do. So if you make it too tiny, if it's only like this big on your paper, it's going to be very, very hard to get in all these cool patterns that are going to make your monster look super unique. So just keep that in mind. Use the whole space, top and bottom, and try to use as much as you can side to side as well. Unless your monster just, if you want it super skinny, then I understand you wouldn't use the whole width of the paper. Um, but just keep that in mind. Use your space. You're given a lot of space. We might as well use it. So I am just going here, and some of these patterns I drew with a pencil first, but some of them I'm just going with it and making it up as I go here with my Sharpie. But that's a little dangerous if you're not sure what you're doing, because remember, you can't erase Sharpie. Um, but I trust myself, so that's what I'm doing here. You do what you need to do. When you're making your complex patterns, play around with like big wide patterns, like these diamonds are nice and kind of wide, and then play around here with like really tight, small patterns. And that will add a lot of variety to your work. Now the thing you have to think about as you're doing this, when to stop, right? We have to find that sort of perfect middle ground of when to stop. So you want it to look interesting and not boring, but you don't want it to be overwhelming that we can't even tell that this is a monster anymore. So that's where you have to be the judgment of your own work, knowing when to say, all right, that's enough. And now I'm going to add um, color or I'm going to just stop, right? Um, so I think I'm getting very close to a stopping point. The thing that I need to work on though, that I notice as I look at my work is line variety and line quality. So I have all these awesome complex patterns, but they are all roughly the same weight. So I am going to go in and I'm going to make some of these lines thicker and bolder. The ones that I think need to stand out a bit more. And so I'm just drawing right next to the line I already drew with a black marker to make it appear a little more chunky, a little more bold. So I'm going to pick probably a lot of my outlines of the figure itself. I'm going to increase the line quality. I'm going to make it a little heavier so that way the main part of the body is emphasized. And then I'll leave probably a lot of my patterns just normal weight of line. So you can see already the body is starting to kind of come back to life. It's not getting lost within all of these patterns. So that is something you need to step back. What is a smart thing to do is actually, if you can hang up your work somehow, like put it on your fridge or ask somebody to hold it and you step back and you look at it, then you can make stronger decisions of what needs to happen to the work. A lot of times we just need a little distance away and then we go, oh yeah, okay, I need, to, I need to work on that. So that's what I'm doing here. my line quality and I like this so much better so much better so I think I'm gonna call myself complete I don't know I think I still need something on top of these eyes maybe I'll make some big eyelashes even though they're on top of the eyeball but it's a monster it can be whatever I want it to be there that makes me so much happier okay so um, I used a Sharpie, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an eraser, and I see a lot of my pencil marks, so I'm going to erase my pencil marks. Oh, be careful. See what I just did there? Don't go too fast.
So now that I have my line drawing complete, I have the option to add color. Um, so I kind of like it just like this as well, but if I'm going to add color. I know I'm not going to use markers here because I think the markers are going to compete with the black lines that I have drawn. So, well, I can't say I'm not going to use markers. I lied there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably use markers just as an edge. So I will probably just go around my edges here. And then I will use crayon or colored pencil to color in the shapes. That way my black lines remain nice and bold because crayon is not as dark as marker. Therefore, it will not compete with all my black lines as much as a marker would. And so you still want to be able to see all your patterns and all your lines. So I'm just going to continue on with this here of outlining with the marker and color it in with my crayons. And I will show you when I am finished. I'm all finished with my monster design so here is the color added with the marker around the edge and I chose to use the secondary colors so I just used three colors throughout that way I gave it more of a focus so I used orange violet and green and I am complete and I'm very happy with my artwork